Hey man, so this is my most popular video, it's also my most commented on, and most of the comments are complaints that you can't hear the audio over the soundtrack, so I'm doing a re-voiceover because I've lost the original audio tracks. Now, with that said, bear with me as I try to remember what it was that I said months ago. So first off, we're using the Bridge Lux EV series strips. I'm using 10 of them and they're alternating 4000 and 3000 Kelvin. I'm getting them lined up on this eighth inch thick 12 inches by 12 inches or foot by foot piece of aluminum. I'm attempting to make it a dollar per watt and I'm attempting to do it in my apartment and or parents garage depending on where I was and what I was working on at the time. But I wanted to do it as the easiest way possible and the most efficient way and the cheapest. So. Join me on this one where we go through and we do things we don't need to do, like drill out those holes because I ended up using thermal double-sided adhesive tape to adhere these strips to the board, which will give a better connection. From what I want to understand is the EB series are made of fiberglass backboards, which aren't very heat conductive, and they don't do well for transferring heat from the board to the aluminum, so this thermal tape should help really well. The Samsung diodes do have uh, aluminum backing, would transfer very well, so those don't have a problem. I also went on DigiKey recently to look some more of these up to see if I couldn't find a couple one footer or two footers or four footers, and they seem to be obsolete and they say non-stock, so I'm not even sure if these are available anymore. Plus, the Samsung diode just came out with the LM301Bs, which seem to be better than the old whatever it is. So, time's moving really fast, and keeping up is pretty difficult. But as you can see, I just put the thermal tape on, and I must have flipped around the board because I put it way too far to the left side of the screen. So, I had to pry up the last strip and move it over. This made me feel pretty confident that the um, ad double adhesive thermal um, tape was doing its job very well. It was very difficult to get off and I'm happy to say that I don't need to put any screws in because that stuff holds very well. Now I just cut short lengths of wire 18 gauge that I had laying around and then I'll strip the ends and then make a U and stuff them inside. I want to keep my stuff clean so I clean up periodically as I go through because, you know, what is it, a, a tidy mind is a happy mind, something like that. Anyways, so I just go through and strip the ends and then I'll go and stick them in a U-shape from daisy chaining each uh, strip to the next one and then connect the two ends to the drivers, positive and negative in conjunction. The tool I'm using is just a flathead um, needle nose thing that my girlfriend used for jewelry making. It makes it super convenient and I'm super glad I have that piece because I've used it multiple times now and pushing into those mold connectors makes it very easy. Um, something I do want to make a comment on is a lot of the stuff like the wire and the potentiometers, even the Wago clips will be very um, expensive up front when you first buy them, but you're buying packs of five. So the more builds you do, the cheaper it's going to be over the long run. Like I didn't have to buy any potentiometers or any wire because I had them from the last build that I did. So that's something to remember is when you build, the more you actually build, the cheaper it becomes because the more stock you'll have. So I just measured out the driver so that I could just put it in. The driver is kind of like an odd size, so I always have to tilt it or get it um, between two of the um, holes because the strips have areas where you're supposed to drill out so that you can mount them to get a really nice, clean, um, even distribution of pressure between the boards. And so that's essentially what I had to aim for, which is why the driver is kind of tilted because it's not exactly the same size. I also used the nylon washers to raise the driver above the board because I wanted space between the board and the driver because the driver will heat up too and so will the board and I don't want them to cause uh, extra heat in that area. I thought having some space so that air can flow between them would make it very easy. These AC connectors are another example of something that you have to buy in, in packs. So you buy like two of them or four of them or whatever it is. And so the first time you buy it, it's kind of, yeah, it'll be, you know, another price tag. But the next build you do, you'll have another one of those that you don't have to buy. And all they are is a gland fitting that screws into a main piece that you then screw both wires into the wire lead from the driver and the plug and you just match the wires use a micro screwdriver and just screw in the little bolts to hold the wires in 
and then close everything up and you're good to go. It took me a few times to figure this one out. This one was pretty complicated because it was like four or five pieces as opposed to another set that I got later after this video is like two pieces and it makes it very easy. I will probably not use these ones again, so be cautious about what AC connectors you use, but they are IP65 waterproof and they make a really nice clean finish. Um, and they're removable. I really like them. I will continue to use them through a lot of my builds to put on um, dry, put on plugs to the drivers. But I also do use the IEC 13 plugs that are like wall mounts because I do like to remove my plug and not have something just floating around in the background. Now, with that said, I got these push connectors with uh, from Home Depot. I try to get a lot of this stuff from Home Depot or local suppliers, so I didn't have to order a lot on Amazon. Um, there was some stuff that I ordered on Amazon, like obviously the hangers that you're about to see. I don't know if they have something like that at Home Depot. I know they have uh, carabiners that you could probably use, and you could just get wire and then use that wire to you can crimp it yourself and it'll work the same. I just happened to buy these hanging pieces off of Amazon for six bucks or whatever it was and I was all right with it. Um, and that's pretty much it. It'll cover a one by one or two by two. Now I'm just drilling out the holes so that I can run the positive and negative wires through the board to connect to the EB strips. I also want to put rubber grommets in because I don't like running wire through aluminum because it'll like, essentially chafe it and then uh, it'll strip the insulation and then you'll have a live wire touching aluminum and then you touch the thing and then you burn yourself and great job, you're dead. So I tried not to do that. I use a potentiometer, 100K ohm. Uh, the way that I learned is 100K ohm for one driver and then you divide 100 based on the drivers that you have. So uh, two drivers is 50K ohm, three drivers is 33K ohm, four drivers is 20K ohm or 25k ohm, five drivers is 20k ohm, and so on and so forth. So you can do multiple drivers, all connect to one potentiometer, as long as the potentiometer is rated for that. And then just solder it on, that's kind of the one thing that sucks. I know Rapid LED has one that you don't have to solder, they already did it for you, just plug it in, it makes it really easy. But there you go. You can see the differences in the colors as far as the 3000 and 4000. Um, it goes up to 120 watts, which was came out to 1.36 repeating. Not exactly what I wanted, a little more, but I will take it. It was pretty decent and I'm happy about it. So with that said, remember guys, grow it funky and keep it fresh.